Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be performing the USB boot method on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. So before we begin, I do want to thank Micro Center for sending me over the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB so we could do all this cool stuff to it. Anything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. So let's begin. Now I currently have it booted up into 720 so it's easier for you guys to see. Now the first thing we do need to do is do a Raspberry Pi update, which I already did. So sudo app update. And as you can see, there should be no packages for me. But if you are to do it, you were supposed to do sudo app full upgrade. And this will actually perform all the packages and everything you need. Now, one of the things we do need to check is VC gen command boot loader version. As you can see, I have the April 16, 2020 update, which means I don't have the USB boot on this. So I do need to update the bootloader to the latest version or the latest beta release. So to do this, we have to do sudo nano etc default rpi eprom update. Head over there and where it says critical, change this to beta. Save it by hitting control X and then Y. And then next, we have to update the firmware. But before that, we have to see what versions we actually have in our system. So we could do this by ls lib firmware raspberry pi bootloader and then there's beta. There's actually a few folders in here. So beta critical stable, but we're going to look into beta. And in here, you can see a couple of versions, which is the pi eprom. And as of, I think 526 and on, it should have the USB boot. I'm gonna use the latest version, which is this one, 615. And now that I know that this is what I need, let me just copy this so I don't mistype it later. All we have to do is sudo pi rpi eprom update dash d dash f lib firmware raspberry pi bootloader beta and then whatever version that we typed in before which is the pi eprom the latest version hit enter it should be successful as you can see it installed the new one and it says please reboot to apply update so i'm going to do a reboot and then when i go back to it i'm going to check my version to make sure it says june 15. okay now that everything is booted let's head back into our terminal and we could check with vc gen command boot loader underscore version. And there you go, June 15, 2020. And that should have the latest EEPROM, so we should be able to boot off USB. The next step is to copy all the files over to USB. So I'm debating between using an SSD right now or using just a regular USB. So I'm gonna actually give this a try and copy stuff over to the SSD, which is 120 gigabyte I have laying around. And if this doesn't work due to the power issues of the USB, I will just switch it over to a regular USB thumb drive. And we'll see. So I'm gonna plug this into my USB 3. Head over to accessories and go over to SD card copier. Copy from device, which is my MMC or 16 gigabyte SSD. And then the suburb, sub, sub rent, sub rent, one of those, over to this device. Once it's done with that, hit start. It will erase all the contents. That's fine. I have nothing on that that I need. And it's just going to transfer everything over. All right, now everything transferred over and let's give that a test. So what I'm gonna do is power off the device, shut down and unplug the SD card and I'm gonna just leave it on the SSD.
All right, and we are back. We finally booted into the USB boot. Unfortunately, I couldn't use my SSD because I was getting a lot of input output errors, which is probably because I don't have external power source on this guy. And yeah, I ended up having to redo the whole process onto a USB thumb drive instead. So I have a 16 gigabyte USB thumb drive, USB 3.0 on there right now. And yeah, it booted just fine. Now let's check out some stuff. I really wanted to do the test on the SSD, but unfortunately, like I said, I don't have that one that has the external power. So I will be working on getting that before I do like a full on uh, USB benchmark for this guy. But for now, we could test out the USB 3.0 with the USB thumb drive. Now I'm gonna run uh, sudo. Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at this. If I go VC gen command, boot loader version uh yep june 15th okay so i'm good with that uh let's do uh df dash h and we'll take a look so it is on sda and i got all my space okay that's cool now let's try to do uh, hd parameters so sudo hd param capital t lowercase t slash dev slash sda and we'll see what we get from this. Now, I know it's gonna pop up with an error message because it is not some sort of like a SCSI drive or SATA drive where it can't send a pro appropriate command. So it's gonna pop up with like an SG error, I believe. Uh, yep, see, there you go. Bad or missing sense. It's trying to send the command and it's not working. But anyway, uh, we got uh, timer buffer reads 288 MB or 95.48 per second, which is really, really good because that's close to 100 megabytes per second. And this uh, time cache read, which I'm not really concerned about more. So I'm looking into this. So on your SD card, you are probably going to get max out at like 50 megabytes per second and generally it's around like 35 megabytes per second depending on your sd card and being able to even surpass that and get to 100 megabytes per second that's really really good already and i bet you on the ssd it should be a lot faster too so yeah i'm i'm actually gonna jump back into the sd card and run this test to see the comparison now let's take a look at if i open my browser before we do that yeah it, it loads really quick it just popped right up I have no problem with it. It actually works pretty smooth just on the USB. And the USB thumb drives is a little bit more reliable than SD cards, but I would love to have it on an SSD. Anyway, let's jump back over to the SD card version and run the same test and see what numbers we get. All right, so we are back on the SD card. So let's run a quick HD parameter test and see what we get with this. Lowercase t slash dev slash MMC BLKP0. Well, no P, but yeah, BLK zero. All right. 992. Let's see if uh, buffer disk reads what it is. 43 megabytes per second. So as you can see, I'm not even maxed out. Like I could actually get up to 50 if I used a different card, but I believe this is the U1 uh, version and it's getting up to 43, which is really, really good. It's just not as fast as USB 3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It actually wasn't too hard to do this process. And the only time consuming thing you had to do was transfer the SD card over to the USB. Other than that, it was pretty quick. All we had to do was just change like one parameter, update it and stuff like that. It was pretty easy. I do think that this is way more reliable than running an SD card, especially if it's gonna be on SSD for longevity of like a server run or something like that. And if you pair this up with a more heavier set desktop now with the eight gigs of RAM, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty responsive because the read speeds are a lot better. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. And if you guys have got any questions, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.